Management 3032 M50. My name is Nicholas Jones and we'll be going through the process of writing a business proposal. Let's begin with what a business proposal is. A business proposal is a document designed to persuade a anticipated customer in using your services or product for a future job. The length of the document doesn't matter as long as the information is successfully delivered. Usually that information includes the current issue the client is having to solve, a possible solution, and the total cost for that solution. There are three types of business proposals. Formally solicited proposals, informally solicited proposals, and unsolicited proposals. A formally solicited proposal is a request that has been sent in by a client and when this happens, the firm that gets the request gets all the information that the customer wants and that enables the firm to provide a solid proposal for that client. A informal solicited proposal, the firm getting the proposal will complete the initial research for the customer, meaning that the client has already started some, some research of what they're wanting and they'll uh, forfeit that information to the firm, which the firm can build on to. Unsolicited proposals are proposals that have been made by the firm for a potential client. So if um, there's a client out there that's been looking for a certain service or product, this proposal can be used for those clients that already provide a foundation of a proposal. Now we're going to go through the layout of a proposal. So we're going to go through practically what the entire proposal should include and some samples of how that may look. Uh, your first page should be the title page, which should include the writer's name, the company's name, and the company logo, together with the contact information and the client's name. Um, all these being present gives an easy platform to follow to have all the information needed of the company and the customer itself. Next, we should include the table of contents, which provides a summary of each page or section of the document. So usually we want to use one or two words that sums up what is going to be on that page. The reasoning of the table of contents is to help the client to find where certain information is within the document. We want to keep the table of contents short and sweet for the average human uh, attention span is about 10 seconds. So we don't want to bombard them with a tons of information. The, and if the table of contents or the document itself is on the uh, computer or in a uh, e-file, the table of contents should be able to be clicked on so it instantly brings you to that page. After the table of contents comes the executive summary which is a high-level oversight of the company. The executive summary is a chance to talk about your business, uh, the particular gains the client can expect from your services or products provided. You can also go into some of your achievements that um, you have achieved throughout your business career. Overall, it's just a summary of your business just to help convince the client that you provide the best solutions to their problems. Talking about solutions and problems actually leads us to our next slide. This is where we want to clearly point out the problem to the client so they can visualize a representation of it throughout our proposal. We also want to point out other issues that the client may not be aware of. So if we discover there's other problems on top of the problem that they originally came to us with, this is a good time to tell them about that, which will give you more business opportunities and also just show them that you're willing to give a little bit more information that they originally didn't even ask for. Next, we should go into the solution, which should be addressed with the how and when of the proposal. So we want to talk about how we're going to fix the problem and when we're going to fix the problem. A good way to show this is through a timeline, which shows our strategy all, all, all laid out. So it gives the client an idea of when we're going to do certain parts of the job and when the job should be finished. Now that we're getting close to wrapping up our proposal, we should introduce our team experts and provide a short bio for each team, for each team member and their achievements for the client just to build some trust with the team that they're going to be working with. About Us page is also recommended for it's helpful for sharing a story behind the company. 
You can also share some of the achievements and other jobs that you've done showing the professionalism of your business. It's also wise to create a pricing table that shows the pricing for various products and services. So the client has the opportunity to look through all services offered or products offered and they can narrow down what they need and what they don't. Lastly comes the finalizing of the proposal. This is where the client will accept the terms and conditions of the proposal and sign off. Terms and conditions usually include an outline of what you and the party has agreed on and includes payments, dates, timelines, etc. and included terms of cancellation if for every reason payment isn't received or the client happens to change their mind, which unfortunately does happen. The firm's legal team member should also look over this proposal to make sure that everything looks correct and there's no legal um, roadblocks that, we're, that we could possibly be getting in. And lastly, it's a signature from the client and that is your entire business proposal. I hope you've enjoyed my presentation and thank you for listening.